Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO, also known as your Title King. Don't forget to subscribe below and click the like button. Give us a thumbs up, let us know you're watching the video. Give us a little tip, a comment, something that will help us better engage you on the next video. Maybe we could talk about a topic that better interests you or can help educate you on something. Today's topic, we're talking about a common thing that we see with real estate closings, and that's talking about prorations. There are a lot of times where we prorate some numbers when it comes to a closing statement, and there's always questions that people say, well, where did you get that number? What should I do to, to better set myself up to make sure prorations are done effectively? So I'm gonna talk about a few different ones. The first one is going to be homeowners association dues. We order what's called an estoppel certificate from the homeowners association or management company. Yes, some of those can be pricey, but as we know with the new law that came out, we're trying to regulate the industry for that. The estoppel certificate is gonna tell us if there are any special assessments that are due from the seller or the buyer at closing. If there's any membership dues, maybe an application fee or, or a one-time initiation to a homeowner's association. And most importantly is those homeowner's dues, whether they're paid monthly or quarterly, you're gonna see on your closing statement usually a debit to one party and a credit to another party. So let's say we're closing in the month of August and the seller has already prepaid their homeowner's association dues for the month of August we are then going to give the seller a credit from the day of closing to the end of the month. Because why should the seller be responsible to pay the homeowner's dues the time that the buyer is going to own the property? So that's one proration that you're gonna see. And we get those numbers from the estoppel certificate, so you don't really have to worry about that very much. We gather that information and put it on the closing statement. You just need to let us know, hey, there's a homeowner's association, Here's the management company's information and we'll take care of the rest to make it easy for you. The next one I want to talk about are going to be rent prorations. We see on a lot of the investor deals there's rent prorations. This information is not readily accessible. Accessible. We need to get this information from the landlord and from the tenant. So we do what's called a tenant estoppel letter where we're going to ask the tenant to fill out was there a security deposit given. One of the things that we see on these real estate contracts is that the security deposit sometimes doesn't get passed over. And it's very, very important if you're writing a contract to make sure you put in the additional clauses, I would always write in there, tenant security deposit will be transferred to the buyer at closing. So this way, you as the buyer, you don't get into trouble when all of a sudden that tenant's lease expires and they say, I'd like my security deposit back and you see that you haven't gotten it. We do not, as a title agent, get involved in the tenant landlord issues. We simply just put the prorations on there for what has been paid and if there's any transfer and security deposit. So as a buyer, make sure you get that information from the tenant. Ask the tenant, hey, when's the last time you paid your rent? Did you pay first, last in security? Is there a security deposit so we can better prorate on the closing statement so you get what's due to you at closing so you do not have a problem or a nasty tenant later on down the line when you tell them, well, you didn't receive the security deposit to be able to give it back. And the last one I wanna talk about is tax proration. This is the most important. When we prorate property taxes, we do it two different ways because in some counties, there's a small portion of fees that are paid in arrears and there's a portion that's paid in advance. So sometimes you'll see uh, non ad valorem and ad valorem taxes that are prorated differently because it depends on when they're paid. And that's what we handle here at Independence Title. We'll handle the, the proper proration. But the one thing I do want to talk to you about when it comes to tax prorations, you're usually going to see a credit. The seller is usually going to give the buyer a credit for the large portion of the year because taxes come out at the end of the year when they're due. So the seller is going to give the buyer a tax credit. So this way, when the tax bill comes out in November, you as the buyer, you have enough money to pay those property taxes. But the one thing I want to talk to you about is we get a lot of questions that say, well, the taxes are going to be this. We cannot rely on an assumption of what the taxes are going to go, are going to be next year or at the end of the year. So if we're in August right now, we don't know what the tax bill is going to be in November. So if you think you have a reason that the taxes are going to be much higher for any reason, you need to bring that to your realtor's attention, let them know so they can call the seller and try and negotiate maybe a little bit better of a credit. We are only allowed to prorate what we know. So if we know last year's gross taxes 
and there was a homestead exemption on there, that's the credit we are going to base our prorations off of. So if it comes up that it's higher, next year when the tax bill comes out or in November of this year for the, the, this year's taxes, there's going to be a difference. So if the taxes go up $1,000, that's $100 a month that you as the buyer are now gonna have to pay, but what if the seller lived in the property for eight months? So if you know there's going to be an adjustment, you guys need to negotiate that and let us know how much we need to prorate. We can only base the prorations off of the last year's taxes that have been posted because we don't know what they're gonna be. So I hope you learned something good about prorations. They're very important on a closing statement to make sure you're getting the credits you deserve. Whether you're the buyer or the seller, credits could be coming your way. Don't forget to subscribe below, like our video, let us know a topic that you would like to see maybe on next week's Title Tuesdays. Thanks for always watching our, our episodes. We love generating these every single week to educate you, the consumer, the buyer, the realtor, maybe the investor on what to look out for for your next real estate closing. So thanks for watching. My name's Kevin Thatcher with Independence Title and we look forward to seeing you at the closing table.